Guys, thank you so much. You guys did this. This channel, I started out, um, yeah, when I bought, bought that old Suzuki motorcycle and was heading across the country and I filmed it. I said, if, if there's anything worth filming and documenting, it's this trip, this cross country motorcycle trip. So I did that, put it up on YouTube, and then I just kind of kept the channel rolling and not really having plans to make a channel, but once I started meeting you guys, interacting, and just starting to make friends all over the world, and just realizing how incredible the YouTube community is, and then finding Buckin's channel and getting to all that, and then I just went nuts with the chainsaws. Um, once I started meeting you guys and got this channel rolling, my hobbies totally changed. I grew up, you know, in the woodcutting scene, right, with my father and that. I was just kind of getting old enough and into it where I was able to start running a chainsaw in the woods and that uh, when I moved away, really. So, I'm kind of just re reigniting an old... Getting back to my roots, I guess, with the John Threat chainsaws. You know, last summer before that, like all I'd, my, I was heavy into dirt bikes, and I still am, and snowmobiles and stuff, but I just haven't had time this year. So, just thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, friends. And just starting to become a channel now. And it's really, it's really cool, guys. Thank all of you. It has the Molly cylinder. I know that's good because Ironhurst told me. <laughs> Look at this. 2071 Turbo. Got the outside dog. Now this is the original bar and chain. That's the original bar, guys. This thing's been ran like. Original chain. Don't think it's ever been sharpened. So, as I as I normally do, out of habit, go on to Kijiji and type in John Surratt Chainsaw just to see what's around. And usually, not much or nothing pops up because they're not they're not a common saw in this area. So. Yesterday I typed in John Surratt Chainsaw and this popped up and I was like holy crap and I kind of felt like a, like stupid like ashamed of myself like why am I going to buy another chainsaw I have too many chainsaws but this is a saw that I wanted and once I went and looked at it I was like holy crap like I would have never been able to sleep at night knowing I let this saw go. This is a 1997. John Surrett 2071 Turbo, right? So it's like a 371 Husky, basically. 24 inch bar. Got the dogs inside and out. And this saw is like brand new, guys. Brand new, it's never, it's like a brand new 1997, 2071. So, I fell out of this. He worked up north. Remote uh, like Indian reservation areas on that uh, doing drywalling in buildings and They flew in and flew out. I guess there's three guys working and they had a little some kind of little airplane that they're flying back and forth with so The brother was telling me that One night there I don't know if they're flying into work or what they're doing but the three of them were in the plane around Hinton, Alberta and I guess they were partying, just all drunk and stoned and having a great time flying in this airplane. <laughs> and they miscalculated something. They're going over a body of water towards the mountains and they're, they misjudged something and they crashed the plane. And uh, all three of them died. So they saw this guy had a, a property out by Hinton, I think, or somewhere. He had a property somewhere. So at the time, uh, you know, he's working away, making good money, so it's like, oh, well, money's no object. I need a chainsaw, so I might as well go out and get myself the biggest, best chainsaw money can buy. So we've got this 2071 John Threat. Nice choice, by the way. Got 24-inch bar, got the dogs inside and out. You know, he got her got all the bells and whistles. So, the guy passed away in 1998, and this saw is a 1997 model. So, 
it was virtually a brand new saw uh, at the time of the incident. So the saw sat, and then one day, the son of the man who had passed away handed the saw to the guy's brother, right? So when he's uncle, he said, here, this saw is yours. So the guy had it, he held on to it, he used it a little bit, a couple of times, trying to do like some live edge wood stuff, but I don't think he used it very much. And then he decided, to, he said the saw is too crazy, it's too big, it's too dangerous, he doesn't want nothing to do with it. So he decided that it was time to let go. And so he put it for sale, and of course, people just came at it like vultures. I just came at it, right place, right time, and said, where are you? I'm coming. And I went straight to his house and looked at it, and it's, well, anything. The pull rope looks white. It's, it's a brand new chainsaw. It's a brand new chainsaw. A 1997, 2071. Look at that. I paid $500 Canadian, so that works out to $377 US. Uh, you go to go buy a new Johnson right now, they're still available for, I don't know how much longer, but it'd be a 2172, but they're that stupid X Torque, so you can't even get a saw this good anymore, like this is unreal and they're like oh geez I don't know how much they are at least twelve hundred dollars so maybe not that much maybe I don't know what they are it must be close to that yeah so it's un unbelievable like the saw it's almost I hate getting stuff that's too nice because you just don't want to use it because it's like holy crap it survived from 1997 to 2019 and it's still pristine it's like, I have to use it. Like this, it's a beautiful chainsaw. It's meant to be used, but it's like, man, it's just too nice. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. So, my John Surratt collection is complete now. People are probably like, why do you keep buying chainsaws? And it's just, you know what? John Surratt's a dying thing now, <laughs> and so I bought my 2260 when I could on a really good deal. So. I basically have the 910, that's the last true John Surrett, and the 2260 is basically the last newest modern model of John Surrett. So I got kind of one from each hand. I don't have like a first John Surrett, but but that. So I've got a pretty well-rounded collection now. There's one more saw that I have that I've modified. It's kind of a rat rod, uh, hot rod saw, I guess, sort of. But it's been fighting me. Oh. Ah, it was running good, and then there was an ignition issue, got that fixed. Then it wasn't sucking fuel, so I got that kind of figured out, I think, and now I can't get it to stop sucking air through the carb block. And I'm just getting ready to throw it in the fire, but I'm not going to, so I got the whole build series of that film, but I just, <laughs> I'm holding off showing I want to get the saw broke in and have the build series followed up by a, the showing it run series, you know what I mean? And I've never seen something fighting so hard. So anyways. Brand new Johnson Red Turbo. Look at that. 1997. Can't tell me that's not clean. <laughs> starting to get kind of dark out it's probably not too awful late to run this but I'm not going to because I've been running saws on and off all day and the neighbors behind me on the other side of the fence are trying to sit outside and enjoy so I think I've uh, ticked them off enough for one night so I'm not going to run this thing but you, you know what a, you, you know how a 372 runs same thing so you're going to post later tonight but it's remembrance day here so I hope we've all we you guys all have taken a moment to uh, remember the men who have fallen for us and be thankful that we're living in these free countries that we are because um, these brave young men and women that have lost their lives for us and the ones that continue to survive today 
and I thank you all for your service and it's we're truly blessed and we all have to be truly thankful to be living in the free countries that we are and to be able to enjoy the things that we do uh, it's uh, we you know we are the lucky ones we truly are so God bless you all and have a good night